Hi, I'm Scott Grove, and I want to show you how to give more pop to your inlay. More specifically, if you're doing particle or bits of inlay, how do you make them pop? The bottom line is, is you want to take the void that you're inlaying these bits into. Uh, you want to paint it black or a darker contrasting color. I typically like to uh, use black, but for example, if you're inlaying, say, key filings, which are kind of orange, go with the uh, complement color, so that would be a dark blue. But for all intents and purposes, let's just say uh, black for right now, and I want to show you how to do that. So here's an example of a groove inlay with opal, and on this side you can see I painted the groove black, and it just, in my opinion, just makes those bits of opal stand out, really because the voids uh, sort of give it some contrast, as opposed to this side where uh, it's just a natural groove. There's really nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's really an aesthetic decision, your decision. But as you can see, I like uh, painting it in black. It really just gives it that pop. And for what it's worth, this uh, is, is common practice for anything that has an iridescence to it, including mica powders. If you have a mica powder and you're mixing epoxy resin uh, with it, uh, having a black background really makes it good. So with like pen turners, they'll often paint the, the tube black. But uh, that's another, another episode altogether. So let me show you how I uh, prep the... the the groove and how I go ahead and apply the black. So before you paint the groove black, it's very important that you seal the groove. So any, so none of that sort of black bleeds through. So here's an example of a piece of pine where uh, the black soaked into the grain and you can also see a piece of oak here. And this is a good example. You, you don't want to have that fuzzy edge. It's really nice to have a, a nice crisp sharp line. So to seal your void or your groove, you can use a variety of resins. You can use shellac, you can use uh, CA or cyanacrylate glue, epoxies are great, and even a UV cure sealer. They're all great. I just like to work a lot faster. I prefer the UV cure because it's a high solids. You can get it in one coat, where some of these other products might take two or three coats. And you just want to be sure that any of that open pour is really sealed well. Maple maybe only needs one coat, but uh, if you have an open pour like um, oak or ash, something like that, you're really going to want to give it a, a good coat. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the Solarez grain sealer, and then we'll go ahead and apply the black. And this is a good example. On my test piece here, you can see I've used CA glue, and the CA glue soaked through the uh, end grain of, of the uh, maple here. So even maple, which is a tight grain, the CA glue... Uh, really soak through. And can you imagine what that would look like if it was pigmented black? So uh, that's great. But I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate on another area here of my test piece. I'll demonstrate the UV sealer. You remember whenever you're using um, UV, you want to make sure you have a good set of uh, UV glasses because the uh, light or torch, if you're using that to set the grain, can hurt your eyes. You can certainly also go outside and just expose it to the sun. So, so any, any UV product is 100% solids. That's, again, another reason why I really like this material. It fills the grains in one coat. You can brush it on. In this case, I'm just going to dribble a little on and, and simply wipe this on. It's really important that you get the end, the end grain or the edges of the groove. And now, with my safety glasses on, I can simply hit this with the UV light. Standard practice for any UV is to put it on for 15 seconds, take it off for 15 seconds, and put it back on. Cycle that through two or three times. But that was only two, uh, two hits of the light, and now that's perfectly dry. And as you can see, this powders up really, really well. I can sand the bottom nice and smooth. And now I'm comfortable that my end grain is sealed. So now we want to go ahead and paint this with black. Again, we can use a variety of resins from the shellac to CA glue, even epoxy. In this case, I'm going to use the Glue Boost Fill and Finish Thin, and that mixes with the pigments really well. So let's talk about the pigments. I often like to use a blend all powder. This is from Mohawk Supply. This is great for uh, touch up. You can get these in a variety of colors. Though I really prefer the Glue Boost Master Tint. Reason being is one, it's pH balanced. 
uh, because if you're using CA glue, acidity can prevent it from kicking. So if you're using acidic wood, you may want to neutralize the wood with baking soda and water or spray it with some accelerator and let it dry. In addition, I found the pigment to uh, dissolve or blend really well uh, to a nice creamy uh, mixture uh, with the CA glue. So, but that's my pigment of choice. In a jam, I've used Transtint Black. You can use Stain. I've even used the Magic Marker, although some of those are metallic dyes and they sort of have a bluish, purplish kind of cast. I like sort of the, the, the true dead black. That's why I like the Master Tint. I like to take a little um, <clears throat> salsa cup. I squirt a little CA glue in that. And since I'm working with CA glue, I buy these sort of cheap disposable brushes. This has a little fine tip, might be a little small for this surface, but you'll get the idea. So the technique that I use is I dip my brush into the CA glue, dip it into the pigment, and then sort of rub it on the side. Add a little more CA glue, kind of revert, oh, spill it all over your work and kind of revert, reverse that process a number of times. And you'll get a nice little um, puddle here on the side of a really rich, creamy black uh, pigment. I, th I can then go ahead and use that to paint my groove. And you wanna be sure that you get up on the edges. And there you go. I'm not too worried about if I've got any on the top because that's going to be sanded off. And I also sealed that so I've protected the grain. So don't only just seal the groove, make sure you seal the surrounding area also. I can let this naturally dry or again, I like the glue boost because it doesn't bloom or blush, turn your CA white. Love this stuff. I can go ahead and hit this right away let that kick and I'm good to go. I like to keep working. And from this point, I can go ahead and put my, uh, oh, say opalin. I could put PowerShell. Or I can even put key filings. This is a side note. This is a great free supply. Go to a big box store and uh, just go to the key department and ask them for their key filings. That makes a great inlay also, or you can mix and match. So there you go. I hope that uh, helps. Make your inlay pop. Give it a try. Email me with any questions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.